we're off for the weekend and um, one night uh, we'd done the typical thing of having an argument over what size suitcase to take. I thought, you know, a middle sized suitcase would do fine for two of us. He thought a small suitcase, an overnight suitcase, you know, one of those cabin sized ones. Um, the result is that uh, he won, but I've ended up with extra bags because I've got toiletries in a separate bag, I've got shoes in a separate bag, and we're going in the car, and my philosophy is just shove it all in there. There's no point in economising on what you're taking with you because then it gives you choices. So we've arrived and um, I've quickly discovered I didn't bring a lipstick. So I had to find that particular colour and I did find something pretty close to Laura Mercier. So I'm wearing it at the moment. I will uh, link it down uh, below for you. Pretty pleased with it though. It will, it will be good for my lipstick wardrobe even if I didn't need it because it's so close to my number seven one I already had. See my stuff? There it is. I've just got it out of the suitcase. That's all sorted into e-bags or the cubes, you know. Isn't that a hotel room? Ooh. And it looks very quaint, doesn't it? Yeah. The fuller's in, um, where are we? Heart in uh, Hampton Heart. Wick. In Hampton Wick, Just yeah. outside of Kingston upon Thames. And look at this phone. Isn't that quaint? Obviously a replica, but it's a, a quaint, cute. A nice added touch, I think, that. I like that bottle as well. They're the, um, oh, look, you've got a posh coffee maker as well, darling. Yeah, I know, yeah. I saw that coffee maker, that's nice. If you like coffee. Nice touch, yep. So, uh, what's the bathroom like? Haven't looked yet. I'm going to, I'm going to. It's always a good test, isn't it? That's nice, nearly refurbished. Oh, isn't that nice, actually? I mean, it's small, but isn't that nice? That is well done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see it's nearly refurbished and clean. Can't you? The lights around there. Hello, little ducklings here. Out in the um, pond in Bushy Park, which is a royal park. There, look, he thinks he's a deer whisperer. There he is, John, the deer. See, Mr. Deer Whisperer. Uh, impressive, isn't it? Look at the herd. It's a big herd. Yeah, but this is a herd of juvenile males. Because they've all got antlers. Thank you. Thank you. I believe they're so close. <laughs> I like the scenery here. We've got a lot on our lake. And that green and the water as well. It's lovely, isn't it? Must I think that is. Ooh, weed of some sort in there. Yeah, yeah they're like oranges on them. Oh, little mallards. Nice. <laughs> swans there. I've never seen so many swans in one place. Yeah. They're Russian geese. I'm sure I looked them up. Got purple legs, got brown around the eyes. They're, they're coming here while it's They're a nice awesome colours actually. Yeah. I wouldn't mind dressing in those colours. <laughs> awesome. Oh, they think you're feeding them. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm going to wear your outfit. I'm going to wear his outfit. I'm not feeding him, but I'm wearing his outfit. I'm impressive, aren't they? In, um, this is Thames Ditton, and over there is Hampton Court Palace. Uh, that's the gate you go through to get to it. We're not going there, that was just tempting you. We are going to go in here and have a pub lunch. So it's come kind of inside, isn't it nice in here? What's the place called? The Mute Swan? Yes. Yeah, the Mute Swan in. Um, yeah, opposite Thames and Court really in Thames Ditton. So I said we weren't coming to, ha to Hampton Court, we're not, but we're walking through the grounds. 
it's free to walk through and we're just taking a shortcut. But how about that, you know, taking a shortcut through where Henry VIII, um, no, um, it's ruined. Hampton Court, there you go. Right, so we're seeing a secret view now. Apparently not many people know this. You can there, see lion's bottom. you can see the lion's bottom. There we are. From here, in this particular view, particular spot. At the back of the king's arms. So, I have looked at my phone, and we've done, or I have done, apparently according to my phone, 21,600 steps today. I've got to tell you, my legs really, really, really ache. So this is where we're eating tonight. But one thing I wanted to show you about this place, look. Real milk. And that came in the fridge, which I haven't opened yet. John John opened the fridge. Yes, in the fridge. A few bits and pieces of alcohol there. There is a price list. But yeah, real milk. <coughs> Have a look, see some milk on the price list. Complimentary. Milk's complimentary. But yeah, I can do so nice to have real fresh milk in your hotel room instead of that UHT little sachet thing, you know, pot that you normally get. That was lovely for a morning a cup of tea this morning in our room. Well, we're off to um, Ham House. Yeah, Ham, Ham House now. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed that stay. And um, we were saying over breakfast that it's kind of like the old coaching inn style where a pub also has um, rooms for people passing, you know, when they have the, I don't know, coaching coaches. But um, kind of that model, really, isn't it? It's the modern version of that model. 1610, apparently, that was first built. It's, um, life in the 16th century, if, or 17th century, if you're affluent, was like Insta Stories and YouTube on, on steroids because you didn't do anything, anything at all, in private. So the lady here, the Duchess, I think it is Duchess, she had a closet built that was her private space beyond the bedroom. Ants of gravel here it was because it was a way of showing wealth and um, it showed that there's an area for the uh, affluent 6th, 17th century peoples to wander up and down in their heels for their own women and the space to show off their clothing. And the grass over there, the reason they planted it with grass was because that also showed wealth. Because you, um, it, there weren't lawnmowers, and so in order to have so much grass, it meant you had people to hand cut it. So we're inside the house now. Fantastic picture there, isn't it? Look at the staircase. Someone really liked decor detail. There's even faces on that. Candelabra. I'm not sure you can actually see that, but no, oh, you have the detail here. Look. Ginger. Tapestries on the wall here. Very, very ornate room. You can see a bit of the French influence. They were splashing out their money, weren't they? They'll show how wealthy they were. Ostentatious. This was a 17th century bling. I'd like to have met her. The uh, Duchess here, she, Elizabeth, forged her own path in a man's world. The daughter of a courtier and the wife of a duke, a patron of the fine decorative arts and a friend and hostess to royalty. Elizabeth was all this and more. So she was a bit of a... Um, a modern woman in those, in in that world. Just look at this library. Okay. That globe there. Yes. So this room was the Queen's bedchamber. No bed in here now, but uh, yeah, they put a room aside or a suite of rooms aside just in case royalty visited. I mean, how ostentatious is that too, to do that? I haven't got room for the Queen to visit. So this is interesting. I've been to quite a few stately homes in the UK, as you'd imagine, but I've never actually seen a room 
like this. This is actually this is a queen's closet. So if she wanted private space away from her bedroom, if she was visiting, this would be her closet. Look, that's like a throne, isn't it? But I learned about that concept of closet today. So the servants' areas here, and the kitchens, and in the basement of the house. Yeah. Oh, you attach all the walls on this very quickly. Thank you. Presumably, really. Alcohol. Alcohol in it. Someone who can't play. Who you sit? Hey, guys. The samples here. Thank you. Alcohol samples. So this is a Duchess's bathroom. Mm -hmm. So bath the bath there. With, I guess the fire Cover is there to heat up the water there. Yeah. Uh -huh. and the bath, even bath and taps. Look. So when were they put in? Sure, as heck, wasn't during the 16th century. It's a, it was a rigmarole of several stages, lasting many hours. It could not be done on a whim and needed servants' time and planning. Cleanliness was achieved or optimistically sought through frequent changes of linen underwear, while bathing was endorsed mainly for health reasons. Although the merits of regular bathing were known to the ancient world. So the bath was put in in Victorian times. That's a, that's a big boiler. Modern addition, of course, the bath in Victorian times. Kind of a nice airy room, isn't it, this bathroom that she would have had. So yeah, in a 17th century life. Some very nice stuff in the National Trust shop. Always is, isn't there? I can't come in here without buying something, I never can. Well, that was really interesting. Um, I've been to quite a few stately homes and uh, the, that was very comprehensive. And what impressed me was that it, it had been um, owned by a lady, a duchess, who'd inherited it from her father in the 17th century. And she married twice. But she she was boss, even though the property would have been the husband's in those days. Once she married, she was boss, and um, you could tell from the house the um, the, the feminine influence. The the staff were, were um, they had the very nice quarters, and um, the senior staff. Another bathroom. I mean, you know, in those days, a bathroom. Feminine touch that one, isn't it? I'm not driving, John's driving, just in case you're wondering. Um, it's been bounced around all over the place. <laughs> well, we're home, and I just want to show you what I bought in the National Trust. So, some gooseberry jam. Gooseberry and elder flower jam. Just, I have to have my jams. Two tea towels because I always like buying pretty tea towels for the kitchen places. And I bought this scarf because that's just been, that's gonna go with my Winnie McGee coat. And I think it's lovely and it was reduced to 10 pounds. 